The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more, we go into the breach, dear friends. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Well, we're over 2,900 on the S&P cash again with uh, 15 points higher on the S&P cash. Dow's up 131, NASDAQ's up 66. Um, and, of course, the first thing we want to look at is what kind of volume do we have coming in here. Uh, it has gotten better over the last couple of days. It's up to uh, about $4 billion. Shares as we start the show, again, way off uh, the volumes that we had both at the highs on the way up and down that we've exceeded. Uh, so I'm going to always remain nervous until we see uh, lots of volume again. Um, actually sold one of my long-term positions in the uh, Tech Insider today, and, uh, and I think we'll probably talk to Tom tomorrow in the Tech Insider uh, about why, but uh, eh, some nice cash into the kitty today. In the short-term trades, I added a couple of trades yesterday, and I think they were down 1% or 1.5% uh, or something close to that at the open, and I, uh, I actually covered them uh, before the open. Uh, just sitting here watching what's happened as we... Uh, uh, kind of fight for the same territory. Uh, I put it in the newsletter this morning. Kind of reminded me of the First World War where they fought over hundreds of yards of land for four years in a row. Uh, it cost millions of lives and uh, eh, didn't get much accomplished, at least for those four years. And then in the, uh, in the last few months, it all kind of came together and it ended. But uh, for the most part, Volume has picked up a little bit, not enough uh, to really signal anything uh, above those highs that we blew through a while, um, eh, what, two, four weeks now, uh, behind. We went back, retested, came back up here. Um, could we just be in a trading range? That is certainly one possibility. Um, was very interested to see how the market re uh, reacted to news uh, with uh President Trump saying that he didn't necessarily think that we had to have a deal with China. They'd eventually come back uh, and uh, ask for a deal. And certainly when you look at the trade uh, deficit uh, figures, uh, pretty astronomical. Um, so, you know, what the question is, what factor do you believe that they would get more hurt than us? And it's got to be pretty high. Anyway, uh, talking about more. Uh, tariffs out out uh, today, and the question is, uh, when and do they come back to the table on this, or do they try to affect our elections by uh, uh, trying to make it uh, problematic? Thinking the eh, Chinese pretty much are pretty good at thinking about the long term, um, but of course we are in a trade war and have been uh, long before. Uh, any new administration came into being and started talking about it. Um, Chinese pretty good. They play the long game. They're not interested in the day-to-day uh, uh, -day minutia of things. Uh, they've been able to uh, do a great job of coming in. Um, maybe what do they got? Maybe 100 million people in slave labor. And, you know, they've got the ability to make a lot of stuff fairly cheaply. Uh, they account for some 90% of all pollution, air pollution, in the world. Um, for a lot of the people that think that that's a big issue, the question is, what are they going to do about it? Would they go to war with China? If it's truly the end of the world, which is a state, what would they do? But right now, 90% of all air pollution 
comes from one country, if you can believe that. Um, and it's pretty easy if you go to any one of their cities uh, during the summer and uh, just see a video of what's going on there. Uh, they are a worthy competitor. Uh, but uh, for some reason, I get the sense that a lot of people are just, don't rock the boat. Uh, 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 we can't do that. And uh, eh, as the old saying goes, you got to break some uh, eggs to make an omelet. But uh, the question is, do we do nothing or do we do something and have temporary problems? And America's not very good at having temporary problems. They just think everything should be uh, smooth. And uh, sometimes it gets a bit rough. Anyway, um, that's it for the beginning. I don't know if we're starting anything big here. Options continue to say that we could have a huge downside on any day based on news. Uh, the market is brittle. Does that mean it's going to uh, crack? Um, uh, probably about as good as the uh, chances of a Cat 5 hurricane today. Talked a little bit about that yesterday. Um, predictions are problematic at best. Uh, I know when conditions are right for hurricanes. I know when conditions are right for the market headed lower. And again, I'm not interested in my batting average. I'm interested in my bank account balance. And uh, that means that I may take a few more losses than many people to have much higher gains. Uh, what else has got going on? Well, let's talk a little bit of history. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And of course, you can put a message in the den or call me at 877-927-6648. It is history repeating, and on this day in 1983, the Osborne Computer Company declares bankruptcy only two years after producing the first portable computer, the Osborne One. I played with one several days. Uh, the computer industry lore has it that the Osborne effect killed the company, but it was due also to competitive pressure and mismanagement. But uh, eh, I'm going to say that it, it, probably 75% of it uh, is the Osborne effect. Uh, and this did get people, um, Osborne not by themselves, but I can probably, if I thought about it for a while, probably come up with 10 or 15 companies that I could remember that died from the same thing. And that is that they uh, advertised a new product uh, and it killed the sales of the existing product to the point where they didn't have the money to come out with the product that they had announced uh, and it was a vicious uh, cycle that sucked them into bankruptcy on this day in 1983. Got a lot of charts to look at today. Uh, again, uh, the question is uh, probably not so much today, but what we do in the next couple of days. Will 2,900 hold? Volume is good, but not as good as it, or not the kind of uh, volume we need. Uh, Apple continues to uh, be pretty good. Good and uh, numbers, uh, the bi monthly numbers on shorts were out last night. We may talk about those today. Uh, and uh, welcome your phone call at 877 927 TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And uh, we've been talking this week about uh, the short interest in Apple. Uh, we now know uh, last night the uh, bi-monthly numbers come out. And those are the ones that, uh, well, on the close of the 31st last month, we know exactly how many shares people went home short. Of course, you only get that every two weeks. And uh, that two weeks is then uh, followed by seven to 10 days. Uh, so you're always kind of looking in the rearview mirror. In fact, what? So we got it last night. So it was 12 days old and actually 13 days old before we could actually do anything for it. Um, always wondered why it takes so long to do this. You know, they used to only do it every month. Um, if I was king for a, a day and more, I'd make sure that every week these numbers were reported and they were reported by that next Monday. Then you could see uh, what people were doing in the short positions. Anyway, 47.5 million shares short in Apple. It is the long, uh, largest by dollar amount of any short on any stock in the uh, in the U.S. markets. Uh, we're up a little bit on lighter volume. Uh, again, you've got to have probably a fairly compelling case to uh, uh, move Apple back down. I suspect that you do. It's just going to take some time. Um, I think maybe it goes back and retests the high, but I do think that there's an opportunity for this to come back to the $200 level. Um, I basically read everything last night on the new phones. They're pretty good. I just think that there's a big problem with Apple and probably the rest, Samsung and the rest, and that is this time frame between now and probably mid to very late first quarter of next year, where why would you buy a phone now if it doesn't do 5G and do it well? Why wouldn't you just wait? Now, Apple people, eh, they don't like a lot of details. And uh, they don't want me to cloud the issue with a lot of facts. They just like to buy their iPhone and proudly present they've got the light, latest iPhone. It is uh, an aspirational type of product, i.e. they just they have it and they like it and they don't want to know much about it. 
uh, when it has problems, they're willing to forgive 10 times the amount of problems that another company would have with a similar product. Um, that's part of being uh, in a market that, that you develop a love by your customers. Um, I would call it an irrational love. Uh, for me, it, uh, it's, it's not about the color uh, of the uh, product in there. Black would be fine with me. Um, to me, it is the price performance, the feature set, and does it do something else that my phone doesn't do that I want it to do? Are there any new features? And I think you can say in all the product line, it is slightly evolutionary, certainly not revolutionary. And my guess is we're probably going to start seeing the drum beat probably in October that talks about 5Gs. And then a lot of people are probably going to think about it. We're probably going to see some ads. We certainly are going to see some new products from, Qual uh, from uh, Samsung uh, that are revolutionary, foldable phones, some other stuff by November. And then, of course, uh, it's all about 5G in the first quarter of next year. So why they may have a fine product for today, if it starts, if we start hearing that 5G drum beat, it could be very easy to see a lot of these companies dip until they get product out in force that does do all that 5G stuff. Um, Got to say that Apple did a very good job of uh, sanding off a lot of the rough edges. I would never buy a phone that had a notch in the screen. So that it's a non-starter for me. Um, and from everything that we read, uh, there will not be a notch in the next version of the Apple uh, iPhone product, but uh, neat products, very expensive. Um, if you talked on them all day, maybe I'd get more excited about them. Um, I've got, what, six monitors in this room just for computers. Um, they are big 27, 29, 32-inch monitors. I don't understand the idea of looking at a postage stamp if I don't have to. If I was mobile, maybe it would make a little bit more sense. So I can say that there's a little bit of bias in it because of the way I use things opposed to other people. But uh, I'd much rather type, talk on Skype using this microphone right in front of me and headphones so that I can sit there and type while I'm talking to somebody. Not something I can really do with a smartphone, no matter how smarty it is. But uh, interesting product. Probably talk more about it with Tom tomorrow in the Tech Insider Hour. I'm going to have an opportunity to go play with a couple of these tonight. So I'll give you at least uh, my rough opinion of what the uh, new iPhones are. But I think eh, it's probably 95% of it already. Uh, neat products. Um, I don't I don't think I, unless I had to have one, I wouldn't buy it until it had 5G in it. But that's the same reason I'm not buying the current Samsung phone either. It does not have all the 5G stuff in it. Those chips have just become available. And... Uh, You'll certainly be able to see those, I think, in the first quarter of next year. Uh, what else do we have going on out here? And we're up 12 points on the S&P cash. We'll keep a close eye on the volume out here, 4.2 billion shares. Again, a little bit better as we got back up in here. Maybe we chew through these highs. Uh, at the moment, um, I've got a lottery ticket for downside protection. I'm willing to sit on that uh, for a option. Uh, even if it goes to zero, uh, and I will continue to take uh, targets of opportunity. Uh, I had a question about yen um, today, and uh, again, you know, you had eh, kind of what your bounce out here today. Um, I recommended in the newsletter that anybody had it. It's probably a good opportunity uh, to sell this morning. You had your nice bounce. Uh, but my guess is that you could get one more pullback to the 20 area, and that may set up something long, and certainly uh, it may set up something longer term uh, if there's any resolution to the trade uh, issues with China. Um, question in the den is, uh, are Qualcomm 5G chips already on the market? Uh, they are sampling now uh, in volume in November. And uh, there's a few things that you have to recognize about uh, um, what these new phones will need. They're working at different frequencies. So they 
have uh, two parts. They need the ability to talk uh, at higher frequencies, and they need an antenna package that works in the phone at these higher frequencies. So there's a lot of new stuff into 5G. I uh, saw the, I think, uh, Charter Communications guy. I think that's who it was earlier on the day. Again, I never turn the volume up. I kind of just leave the TV on during the day to watch the ticker and verify that it matches what I'm seeing on my screens. Uh, that probably goes back to the early days of me trading where I had an ISD line, and it was not uncommon to see uh, the ticker uh, be five minutes behind even uh, on my ISD in line compared to uh, what the New York stuff was showing on CNBC or Bloomberg. We'll talk more about this when we come back. Uh, anyway, uh, talking a little bit more about smartphones and that technology in 5G, and uh, we'll get on to some more charts. Be back in a The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance, along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com, and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Um, and again, uh, somebody put it in the den there, but um, you've got to be fairly good at being able to offer everything in a new system. And you know, there's just not one thing. There's just not a receiver. There's antennas. Uh, of course, there's the infrastructure that has to go on. And I, like I said, I don't listen very often. Um, I just record the stuff. And if anything 
um, looks even half interesting, then maybe I'll go back and rewind and look at it. I did it this morning uh, only with one, uh, and that was the uh, Charter Communication uh, CEO, and he was talking about 5G. And he said the best way to think about 5G is it's a lot of tiny cells in a bigger cell. And that's basically what it is. It's not, there used to be big cells that would handle three or four miles, maybe score a miles. Uh, these new cells are going to, you know, maybe cover a half a square mile or maybe a whole square mile, but not five or 10 or 20 or 30 square miles as a lot of the cell sites now do. Um, it's a, a, it's a bunch of, it's a bunch uh, of tiny cells, which is the best way to think about it. Uh, now you might drive five minutes between cells. If in the early days, I think you can remember that it would drop because they wouldn't hand off correctly from one cell tower to another and you'd always drop your communication. Uh, now uh, it's going to be a lot more cells. So if you drive down an interstate highway between two cities, you're going to have to put up a lot more towers. They're going to have to be, uh, a, a, uh, instead of every 15 miles, they're probably going to have to be every two, three miles. So a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff going on in that. You might look also in the near future uh, as we go to 5G for more towers because they're going to be necessary. They're not going to have to be as large because they're going to be a lot smaller. But uh, hot spots in cafeterias for businesses, everybody will be buying their own little small cell site that links you back in to the bigger one for 5G. And that's kind of it. And I think they kind of thought that the main problem with the existing system was that it just covered too much area. And in fact, um, the density setup is uh, 1 million people per square mile is what 5G will handle. So, you know, New York City, not a problem getting a million people in a square mile and handling all their phone conversations simultaneously. It will expand that large. Uh, yeah, uh, small, yeah. Yeah, they're going to, for a while, there's going to be a lot of these phones using 4G. But that's the, that's where I get back to the beginning, which is who wants to buy a big, expensive twelve or $1,500 phone and only be able to use the 4G inner, inner uh, structure? There's going to be somebody that's smart enough to say, hey, I've got all this new stuff in it. Don't buy the old slow phone as uh, we get more 5G you'll be able to hook up to it. Why would you want to buy that uh, iPhone from uh, uh, fall of 2018? Doesn't do any 5G. Ugh. That's my thought anyway. I think that that will, um, that will be it. One of the reasons why I picked the whole Osborne thing where you advertise things that aren't quite ready yet, um, I think that there will be, especially uh, for the suppliers that have this stuff, they'll be pushing it. They'll be talking about it. And it'll slowly filter to the zeitgeist. I like uh, putting that word in every uh, once a month. I'm probably going to get a word for uh, those words, uh, just like the way I digress so often. Um, <clears throat> question to actually look at uh, uh, some of these gold stocks. As I said, uh, energy on some of these things is just uh, same on the way up, on the same on the way down. Volume. Uh, though on these lows back to August 15th, like ABX, um, was light. So you're going to get a bounce. You bounced up to the gap down and gap back up. That goes back to the fourth on Barrick Gold. So you gap down on 17.45 million shares. You're up on 7 million shares so far. So it shows that there is, you know, if you're talking about a day or two trades so far in gold, and eh, there's something here. Question is, does it just kind of play around in this uh, area for a while, or is this kind of some kind of trend change? And uh, those people that listen to Larry Pesavento's show and some of the other ones, um, I always have the one question, and that is, for the most part, gold went sideways for about 10 years in the 90s. Now, you know, there was some volatility, but it certainly didn't double or drop in half. I think it went from like, Three or 230 to 300 bucks and bounced around in that range for like 10 years. 
So the question is, what were the conditions in 1990 that made it just go sideways for a while? Because the history of gold is that. And that is the, the market tends to go sideways for a very long time in gold. Now, uh, one of the guys that uh, I listened to often when gold was just getting going was uh, Jim Sinclair. And he had a saying, um, I don't know if it's a saying, or at least he had a theory, and that is, the longer that uh, the stock market goes sideways is probably the best money he's ever made in gold. And I don't know, maybe we got a little hint that that's what's going to happen in the last few days. But uh, some of the best money ever made in the gold market was when the stock markets went sideways and everybody decided to go over and play uh, in the gold markets when the stock market wasn't uh, giving them any money. And I wonder if that isn't uh, something that could happen in the near future. I just don't have any evidence. And I still don't really have a good answer of why gold did nothing but go sideways uh, for 10 years. Now, certainly, I knew it built up steam, and we knew when it broke out that that was it. But if we had to re-predict uh, re the 90s, um, even looking back now, what would have been the reasons for a sideways market gold? I still don't have a good answer for that. Still seek it. Maybe someone's got it out there. Okay, other stocks of interest. Um, Chesapeake Energy. Wanted to see how this one was doing. Certainly has come back to the support level of May 25th. This is where it pulled back a bit. Uh, 409. Uh, you had uh, 71.8 million shares. You got into that September 7th uh, with uh, 35 million shares, so about half. So there's a support level there, but again, the energy off this June 10th high came down with eh, just slightly less energy than it went up to that high. So again, I'm looking for stocks that could have V bottoms or stocks that I have to watch more long, uh, on a longer time frame that have uh, sideways action. Uh, at this point, uh, if you can see my power law vector indicator numbers, uh, it was off like maybe 5%. So it just wasn't that much. Um, and of course, when we looked at the numbers in natural gas today, um, I didn't see, I haven't looked lately. Let's take a look real quick. Uh, natural gas off a uh, penny and a half, uh, 28.18 on that gas. Again, we're in a uh, wash in oil that, you know, is kind of an easy byproduct of natural gas, kind of in a, a, uh, a wash in natural gas still. But uh, we'll talk more about that when we return. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, 
Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access Access to John Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN. .com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we had a question in the den. Uh, uh, are there already 5G in uh, Pinellas County, which is... Clearwater, St. Pete area. And, yeah, they put in 600 polls over the summer. I think I talked to about it uh, with Tom O'Brien in the Tech Insider uh, area. Uh, this is going to be one of the reasons why is uh, short of a couple other counties, this is the most uh, densely populated per square foot uh, area in the nation. So it's a great test bed for high-capacity 5G. Uh, they put them up, and if you want to know what they look like, um, the antennas are about uh, like a big skateboard uh, size, kind of long and re rectangular. Just think of a big skateboard, not a uh, kind of a medium or a small one. Um, and there'll be a little box behind it, but they look like a skateboard uh, put vertically on the top of a pole, uh, but they're just uh, maybe four inches thick by, I don't know, 18 inches wide by maybe 30 inches long. And they're just put on these poles. Uh, they've got some things where they can aim it a little bit. Uh, the antennas by themselves are directional. Uh, most of these things will have something like 1,600 directional antennas uh, in them. And they can beam focus. That means that uh, even though you may only be 100 yards from somebody else, uh, they can direct the signal uh, to you on the same frequency that someone else is talking on just 100 yards away and you won't interfere. Literally can, it's got like, just think like little lasers get, uh, uh, aiming right at you from those 5G uh, signs. Anyway, we'll look at a few more. We looked at uh, Chesapeake out here. Again, uh, too much energy on the way down, so I'm looking for some sideways action. Uh, looking for some of these stocks that are uh, kind of uh, hitting highs. I want to look at Intuitive Surgical. Uh, always scares the bejesus out of me to think about to either being long or short this thing since it is uh, uh, not for the faint of heart. Uh, this thing had 600,000 shares on September 4th. Right now we've got about 272,000 shares. Uh, looks like May, uh, it's had a nice move from 429 um, on April 25th. So you've had, uh, what, uh, 130 bucks um, pretty much straight up. We had a little bit of a pullback uh, on June, uh, July 30th here. But now we're going back up again and fairly light volume. Uh, this is why I'm kind of thinking that at best it's time to start thinking about uh, the possibility of a larger consolidation area and these higher prices that we have. 
um, and looking at it. Some of these other stocks that have been parabolic too uh, are getting a lot of my interest. Um, some of them uh, like Roku, uh, again, uh, super monster short uh, sales in this one. In fact, let's see what the uh, latest numbers were. I didn't have a chance to go through all of them. We can certainly find uh, Roku, R-O-K-U. Uh, what do we have? Okay, Roku has, uh, what is that? 9.3 million shares short. Uh, that's about 15% uh, of the short interest. At one time, that was 40%. Uh, if you go back to uh, the start of the year, I think 45% at a high, uh, maybe even 50%. I think that some days uh, in that area, it was 50%. Uh, that's kind of the same setup that GoPro had. Uh, at one point, though, uh, people are going to be out of it. That uh, The number that we did have come out on the 31st of uh, August was uh, about a million and a half more shares short. So I'm not surprised this thing continued up since uh, the end of September. Uh, at one point, though, uh, you'll see uh, that the short interest starts waning. Um, we'll see, uh, three days ago, 26% uh, on the daily short sales number. Uh, just for that day, 18% uh, after that, and yesterday, 16%. So as you see these stocks come up and shorts quit shorting, pretty good indication that, you know, if you can't get the shorts to get squeezed any longer, uh, then a lot of times that's about it. This thing hit 70 bucks. Um, you know, it's like Tesla. A lot of these stocks, the story can go on for a long time uh, before the reality hits. In fact, let's Take a quick look at Tesla. Um, a lot of people want to believe, which always makes me think of the poster in the X-Files. Um, wishing and hoping, probably one of the worst things that a trader can do. Um, I always love George Soros' comments that all of uh, uh, fin financial endeavors uh, our one big lie and deceit after another year job uh, is uh, to get on why it's being perpetrated and get out of it before it's discovered. Uh, whether it's Roku or Tesla, none of these things really pass the smell test. Certainly the debt um, that Tesla uh, is got to take on uh, means that at best uh, today, uh, even with uh, future sales that they discuss, uh, to me, it's always a, been about a 40 or $50 stock. I don't understand this thing being at 300 But again, a lot of these stocks um, take on a life of their own. I bring up uh, iOmega, which was the first one I ever watched uh, that where people went insane. Uh, but, you know, this is not new. Uh, if you go back to the late 50s and early 60s, people thought that bowling alleys were going to print money uh, like a uh, counterfeiter. They, there was no reality. So you go from these uh, lapses of financial dementia from time to time, um, but a lot of people wanted to believe that everybody was going to drive around in electric cars. What we find out is that, you know what, they may, but uh, pilgrims get the arrows, and uh, Tesla was one big pilgrim. So, uh, da 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 da. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. I don't know. Maybe you can ask T-Mobile if you go to your local T-Mobile. If you just drive around, you're going to see them. I mean, they're all over Clearwater. You just know what you're looking for. A big uh, 24, maybe 24, 20, 24-inch 24 wide, 36-inch um, long gray slab on the top of a short telephone pole. Uh, that doesn't have any telephone wires going into it. It's all fed by uh, a fiber going uh, to the bottom of the pole. So it's not connected to anything else. And you'll just see them out there, and they're kind of pointed in various directions. But if you just uh, take a look, you'll see them. Maybe T-Mobile could tell you where they were. Um, I've read some theory that are going to wreck havoc with people's health. Um, yeah. Uh, well, that goes right up with the uh, 
uh, Bigfoot. And strangely enough, most people don't know Bigfoot only wear wore a size ten. He wasn't. He didn't have big feet. Uh, moon hoaxes. Um, you know, uh, perpetual motion machines. There's been a massive amount of uh, work on uh, radiological effects. So, yeah, cell phones use such tiny signals. Now we'll talk about it. When we come back. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics, including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And one of the other stocks I want to look at at highs, uh, certainly light volume highs, is PayPal. PYPL. I'm reticent to short any stock that's in the 90s because of the ability for these things to hit 100, uh, about 80%. Uh, when they do fail, though, they fail rather spectacularly. So if you can say this is one in uh, five times the uh, $90 stock does not go to 100, uh, generally, you know, you want to look at the fact that this thing or look at the the speculation that it would go in half, because when these things fail, they fail spectacularly. You had 12 million shares June, uh, July 25th. Got into it with about half that uh, over a handful of days at the very beginning of, uh, of uh, September. 
You're back up here today now with 5 million shares. You got kind of a little uh, doji, eh, what are we going to call it? Eh, a little hammer up here uh, at the top. It did go above the previous highs. It looks like it's going to close back below it. Um, and as far as energy on the way down uh, from July, uh, July 25th down to that 81.30 on July 31st, it had massive energy in those four days. It's come up on very, very light volume. Again, the down days continue to be problematic. 10 million shares down on the 5th. Uh, it's now come back up. And again, you're back up into these highs. Uh, could it hit 100? I'd much rather short this thing at 100. Um, and maybe it just rips up there on even lighter and lighter volume. And maybe you get this thing at 101 or 102. Maybe volume comes in. And that would be different. But uh, right now, a lot of stocks kind of looking like this, but up here on very light volume at highs. Some down at the lows, but they came down on heavy volume. So I'm looking for a little consolidation before we get back into those. So uh, a lot of time to sit on my hands and uh, take a look and see what happens. In the meantime, we, uh, we sell when we can, and we'll see you here tomorrow. Same at that channel, same at that time. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors.